This private 1938 footage of a German artillery formation taken just one year before the war began shows well the relatively slow process that modernizing the German Wehrmacht was. A majority of the artillery, which was the element of the German army with the most firepower, was still largely horse-drawn as war approached. The footage also fits in well with part one of a new series which follows the original war diary from a colonel in the artillery named Werner Faust who would also go on to lead the 293rd Infantry Division, the 106th Infantry Division, would become a general and also a Knight's Cross with Oak Leaves recipient. At the end of this video, I'll show the next part in the artillery munitions training film that covers duds. So stick around, it's worth it. This fantastic 40 page original war diary that I was able to win at auction covers the dates from February 1st of 1941 until the 12th of November, 1941. Colonel Forst describes the creation of Arco 146, or Artillerie Commandeur 146, that was part of the 47th Army Corps in Army Group Center during the Russian campaign, that was under the command of General Lemonson. We'll follow his diary entries that cover the 17th and 19th Panzer Divisions, the 29th Infantry Division, and covers the battles of Smolensk and Bryansk. It'll make an interesting series, so go ahead and subscribe if you haven't yet. I should also now take the time to thank my Patreon supporters who make buying these original sources possible. If you're not yet a Patreon supporter, please consider becoming one. Supporters get access to exclusive film footage that can't be shown here. Open a free account on my website, military1945.com, and see an example of the footage. But now, let's get back to Colonel Forrest's first entries. Am Sonnabend, den 1. Februar, konnte ich mich bei den On Saturday, February 1st, I was discharged from the artillery school at Jutebog after having completed the task of creating learning material for the trainees. It was about time for me to get in contact with the staff of my new unit, Arco 146, that was being put together in Hanover, to personally see that we'd be getting everything that we'd need. On February 3rd, I arrived in Hanover, and on February 4th, I greeted my personal staff, which, to be honest, seemed a bit undermanned. It was made up of my 1A, or second in command, First Lieutenant Lingel, aide de camp Lieutenant Booking, who I was able to bring with me from AR, or Artillery Regiment 76. The Artillery Communications Officer, Lieutenant Lenz, the weaponry officer, Lieutenant Husser, and the munitions officer, Lieutenant von Gerdowski, who I was able to later bring in from the training department, 76. Forrest goes on naming officers that were responsible for secretarial, logistical, and transportation duties. He continues, It took a considerable amount of time adjusting the staff until it was organized into an efficient and acceptable group that some key positions were held by trusted men from Artillery Regiment 76 was no accident. There was considerable stress and effort expended in putting together the needed motorized fleet. With the pushed production of new vehicles, it was extremely difficult to get the needed spare parts. 
It was literally a fight to get the vehicles we needed into working order, but little by little we were able to master the situation. An important part of the process was trying out each individual vehicle for its designated purpose to make sure that it was adequate. That really was a lot of work that involved a lot of running around and testing. These preparations continued even after the unit was transferred from Hanover to Kassel. On Sunday, the 9th of February, I was able to get home to Wuppertal for a long weekend to tighten up all my loose knots. Not until early Tuesday did I return, which coincidentally meant that I missed the English bomber attack on Hanover, which took place in waves on February 11th. As reported, it was a considerably heavy raid. When I did arrive in Hanover, orders had already arrived which were to send me on the following day to Munich to take part in a conference being held under the leadership of General of the Artillery Grün. Just back from visiting my in-laws, I'd hoped to now be able to meet up with my brother-in-law, which would now be impossible because of the order. The conference in Munich went from February 13th to the 18th and was very informative. Each of us who took part had plenty to bring home and think about. On the last day of the conference, I received news by telephone that the unit would be moved from Hanover to Kassel and that they were already waiting for me there. And now, here's the next chapter in the artillery munition training film. Genau wie der frühste Springer hat auch der Blindgänger keinerlei Wirkung auf den Feind. Wir verstehen unter Blindgänger eine am Ziel zwar angekommene, doch unzerlegt gebliebene Granate. Der Blindgänger ist eigentlich nur ein dem Feind entgegengeschleuderter Eisenklotz, der wirkungslos bleibt. Für Blindgänger gibt es verschiedene Ursachen. Blindgänger können auch die Folge von nass gewordenen Zündern sein. Der auf MV gestellte AZ-23 UMG 0,15 soll nach dem Aufschlag mit Hilfe einer gepressten Schwarzpulververzögerung und einer Schwarzpulverschlagladung die Zündladung und damit das Geschoss zur Detonation bringen. Das einmal nass gewordene Schwarzpulver brennt nicht mehr ab auch wenn es nach längerer Lagerung wieder getrocknet sein sollte, da ein Bestandteil des Schwarzpulvers, Salpeter, auskristallisiert ist. Das Geschoss geht ebenfalls blind. 